Hello, I am Super Orange Cat, and today I'm going to make a video that's a bit different from what I usually make. Usually on this ch channel I cover anime, animation, or other news kind of of that ilk. But today I got to cover this interesting topic that's come up over the past couple weeks. If you've paid attention to any of the news, probably the biggest topic has been the spread of this quote-unquote coronavirus. And... What I find interesting is how, especially the last few days, a lot of people have kind of come out of the woodwork to try to talk about how, oh, this isn't a real problem, the flu kills more people, or if you're, I think, ASAP Science, I'm not 100% sure if it was ASAP Science or, like, Vice or someone, went out and said, like, you're racist if you're worrying about the coronavirus. Well, first off, you're not racist if you're worrying about the coronavirus. That that really goes without saying. but. You know, and I like to kind of address this. I don't want to give any too many personal details about myself, but I did, with research, work with viruses and with the concept of virus spreading and with also the ability to combat these viruses, albeit with nothing nearly as strong or as potent or as scary as this coronavirus. So I like to believe that I do have some degree of insight that a lot of people might not necessarily have about this topic. So as you see here, this picture I have here is of the Johns Hopkins database. What they've been doing is that they've been taking data from all these other sources, including World Health Organization, the CDC, the Chinese self-reported numbers, and made this map show where the coronaviruses are, how many have died, and how many have recovered from it. And one thing I like to point out is with China, and if you can see this just right here, I'm just going to localize it here, China. China far and away has the most cases. I think like 90 something percent of the cases are here. Like just look at the numbers of, as of me doing this video, a little more than 12,000 reported cases with like almost like the 11,900 coming from China alone. And what I like to point out is if you followed... If you know anything really about the Chinese government and their history, you will know that they have a tendency to lie completely about these types of things. As you know, there's a big issue of censorship in China. So I think it's almost safe to assume, based on China's history with misreporting data and with some of the footage we've gotten in, like there's some a bit unconfirmed reports of like complete hospitals swamped with patients. And you've probably heard of the whole... China building hospitals in the courses of hours, which they're, they're actually not doing a good job of. More on that in a minute. I think it's almost safe to assume you can multiply this number by at least 10. And, I, and that goes across the board, especially with regards to total cases and with total deaths. So I think right off the bat, you can almost assume that over about 2,600 pe 2, people have died from this. And that the infected is probably north of 100,000. And this is more or less for Chinese posturing because I could go into geopolitics, but China is in a position right now where they really need to look like they're a stronger country. So if there's a virus that it looks apparent that China can't control, then it makes them look bad on the global stage. And also you have, like, you have scattered reports of like doctors and journalists being arrested in China for reporting on this coronavirus especially noting that numbers are likely much higher than the government self-reports. So that's kind of an interesting thing to know on here. And also about this virus, like people, like I mentioned, said earlier, like, seems like, oh, it's not as bad as the flu. Flu kills hundreds of people every year and no one talks about it. Well, here's what makes this scarier than something like the flu. The flu is something you can predict every year. And the flu is based on a certain set of strains. And of the certain set of strains we more or less can guess on which strains are going to be the ones that will be more prevalent year after year. And generally, the, act, the estimations are about right, except for one year, like eight, nine years ago, that scientists were horribly off. More or less, they can predict it right. And this is something that can be easily vaccinated. To this point, we have no vaccination for coronavirus. And also, coronavirus has this tendency where it can spread spread from asymptomatic victims to other people through the air. So unlike Ebola, if you remember like four or five years ago, there was an Ebola outbreak in West Africa. And actually right now there's an Ebola outbreak in Central Africa at the moment, 
although that's seldom reported on. And what was notable about the Ebola was that it could only spread through bodily fluids, like urine, feces, blood, sweat. Sweat being the scary one because of how prevalent it is, and how it's kind of hard to avoid, especially in a tropical climate like parts of West Africa are. However, if coronavirus it just can spread through the air, and it can spread from someone who's asymptomatic, as in not showing any symptoms. So you could have come into contact with coronavirus, have it, not know that you have it, and then do your daily life and infect other people without knowing you have it. So naturally, they won't know that you have it. So it's so hard to prevent because it can catch you sleeping like that. And that's why coronavirus is actually a pretty scary threat. Now, some people are talking about how this is a possible end of the world scenario. I do not think this is the case, mostly because as to this point, the death rate has been shown to probably be in the ballpark of three to four percent, which is higher than the flu, by the way, and much lower than Ebola. The scariest thing about Ebola when that was an outbreak four to five years ago was the fact that the death rate from infection was actually near 50 percent. So although the number of cases were low, it had a high death rate, which in made the numbers go much higher. And I believe the death count from that was ended up being around three to 4,000 people, which is lower than the self-reported numbers. But like I said, how the Chinese government is probably misleading us with regards to the numbers. The real numbers are probably at least 10 times that. So we probably have around 2,600 dead at this point. And there's also some unconfirmed rumors that the quote-unquote like hospital sites Chinese, China's building was really just a cover for them to build a morgue or to just simply mass bury the bodies. And there's also been some unconfirmed and likely false reports that the Chinese government has been burning bodies of the victims of this. So to this point, and again, although to this point, there's only eight cases in the United States, but like I mentioned, how it can spread without people knowing that they even have it, numbers can get much higher, much faster than with something like Ebola. I believe there's only like a couple confirmed cases in the U.S. Or with, remember, like the SARS outbreak. There was an outbreak of SARS in roughly this region of the world about nearly 20 years ago. And right now we already have more confirmed cases from Chinese self-reported, Chinese self-reporting than was found out SARS years later when we uncovered the true data. And this has grown in a fraction of the time that SARS had. So this is something that can turn into a scary situation. But again, I don't think it will become like this zombie apocalypse, end of the world situation. And the only advice I can have is just just be wary of your own surroundings. Make sure you don't do anything stupid to get yourself infected. And more or less, I'm not going to say like stockpile resources, but make sure you have enough clean water. Make sure you have some like some uh, food you can store for long periods of time. And the threat isn't going to be like some zombie apocalypse. It's going to be something more of there's like a case located in your city and everyone's going to panic and then they're just going to go to the grocery store and buy everything and you're going to have bare shelves. And that's probably going to be the biggest threat from it. A lot of the issues are going to be more from the panic of it than from the actual disease, especially somewhere like in the United States. Like I said, there's only, as of me making this, eight confirmed cases. Although this with the Chinese government's poor response to this, their delayed response to it, at the same time, it could cause this to be a global issue. Like, the World Health Organization has already gone out to call it a global emergency, which I believe they never did for SARS or for the Ebola outbreak. So this is something, I'm not going to say, like, get to your bunkers now, this is, this is the end of the world. It, it's not going to be like that. But at the same time, just be wary of your surroundings. Don't do anything stupid to get yourself infected. Because like I said, we don't have a proven vaccine for this yet. And also, and there's also these rumors also going around that, oh, the center of the outbreak, the seafood market where allegedly this came from, was only a handful of miles from this level four biocontainment facility in Wuhan province. I can't confirm whether or not this is like a man-made thing. There's actually some, you can make some evidence either way on this. The evidence for being, I mean, it's that close, and the Chinese government more likely is working on bioweapons. 
But the one thing I can say that I think might be against the claims that it's a man-made virus is, if you think about pragmatically, if if the Chinese government was going to create a bioweapon to use against foreign armies, wouldn't they at this point be able to create something that would have a death rate higher than, say, 3 or 4%? And then again, this is more pragmatic than like direct evidence, but at the same time, and you have this like whole, like I said, back to the whole media coverage of this. You have a lot of people talking about like, oh, it's racist because racist because people are insulting Chinese people for eating bats. But our food is worse produced. It's like, well, first off, the United States has much higher health regulations than China does. Like, even the stuff where it's like, oh, look at these disgusting ways in which we make meat. We eat meat from pork butts. Well, there's this elaborate sanitation process where they make sure that the meat is edible and can be safely eaten. So, like, when you have these, like, hardcore vegans talk about, like, look at this disgusting footage of how meat is made. Well, it's like, yeah, but they sanitize it. And that's that's the reason why there's relatively few widespread sicknesses from meat in the United States than compared to parts of the third world, which... Although China is making overall strides, the overwhelming majority of the country is the third world still. So, like, what you have, like, Wuhan. Wuhan province is actually most well-known for its dog meat festival, actually. So I was worried for a moment. It's like, oh, it's going to be interesting. It's like, did this come from dog meat? But the current the current story or the narrative right now is that it's come from bat meat, which, again, in China, there's probably no regulations about how to eat bat meat, how to cook bat meat. Just like how also the current story regarding the spread of the HIV AIDS virus is that it came from it came from monkey meat, it came from chimpanzee meat that a flight attendant ate in Cameroon. You know. So it's like, and a lot of these viruses come from animal to human transmission through poor eating, poor sanitation practices. So, and that's the reason why, like, and also in the United States, if there's an issue of food, if there's like how not like a few years ago we had like an E. coli outbreak with like spinach. It's self-reported and recalled. And there's this whole thing, this whole process where companies are held accountable to people who get sick from this if it's their own fault that there's an E. coli outbreak or some type of sickness outbreak. And even if an E. coli outbreak, it's nowhere near as bad as something like coronavirus because E. coli is used as a model organism in science. As in, it's something that we st- use to study many different things. Like, for example, we study virus infection a lot of times by infecting E. coli cells with viruses and to see what happens inside cells when viruses take over. We know virtually everything about E. coli. I think we've mapped the E. coli genome out completely. So if there's something to do with E. coli, it is something that could probably be quickly treated. But again, deaths and casualties will occur if it's not seen fast. And relative to China, who has been shown to cover this, try to cover this for a week before it finally came out to international media that day, a bunch of people are getting really sick here in this part of China all of a sudden. In the U.S., this gets found out quickly. And this gets treated quickly. So when these outbreaks happen, you're talking about maybe a handful of people dying at most. And this can turn into thousands. In fact, in China right now, the real number probably is over a thousand at least. So, like I said, like you have this big culture difference right here in our sanitation practices and our culture of clean and our culture of sanitation too, where especially parts of rural China, there's there's very little concept of sanitation outside of everyday sanitation. So like food preparation, they're might they're probably not wearing gloves. It's like stuff like that too. And that's how viruses can spread really fast. And when you have something as potent, as deadly as coronavirus has shown to be, that can turn into a really big problem. And again, just to finish this rant off right quickly, don't think this can be in the world. If you keep normal sanitation practices, if you just stay wary of your surroundings and try to be safe and more or less, just be wary of people coughing and people who are showing symptoms. And if you 
more or less just keep to your daily routine. Odds are you're you're not going to get coronavirus. And even if you do, to this point, coronavirus, with the current mutation we have, has a very low mortality rate. So I'm going to, I can, you can almost say just carry on, do your everyday thing. It's just, but at the same time, it's something to be wary of because this has shown the potential to be the ugliest outbreak since the Spanish flu of more than a century ago at this point, which is interesting reading, by the way. Don't look that up because that was probably the last time we had a complete global plague-like sickness take over, and it actually had a bit of an impact, quite a bit of an impact on the world population and on how we see sanitation, which I think will likely happen after the end of this outbreak, too. So what do you guys think? Do you like it when I do videos that are kind of outside my, kind of outside the whole anime comfort zone like this? If you want to see my opinions on stuff like diseases, which I do have some practical expertise on, please like this video. If you like, if you like my voice, if you like me covering stuff like this, please subscribe and hit that notification button. I am Super Orange Cat, and that is all.